got to be careful when I do this because if I make that blue too heavy, all this light blue is going to really spread out. So there's our little martini. Put a little bit more of that blue down here. Done with this one, so next thing I do is get my little brush out and uh, I'll take a little bit of this green right here, which is the hooker's green, and I'll mix it in with a little bit of this yellow because, again, we're working on a black canvas, I really want that signature to show up. A little bit on the yellow side, but that's all right. This one we're going to do in warm colors. So we're going to have a lot more red in this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of red kind of everywhere. And uh, here, why don't we put the word bar in a nice bold red. Now this will probably spread out a little bit. So when I do my letters, I make sure that they're spread out as well. Come right on top of that, that olive. And you can see it already starting to spread a little bit. And I think that looks pretty good. And uh, we'll put the word open down here too. Let's we'll make it kind of small. There we go. And why don't we add a why don't we add a little martini glass over here? Kind of step back a little bit. Looks pretty good. And I'd say these two are done. Actually, you know what? I like the pimento over there a little bit more. Well, I'll add a little bit more blue to it. Yeah. Let's take a little bit and I'll put it right down there in the middle. Push that paint out a little bit. Now it usually takes about two days for these to dry. Now the way you're seeing it right now is the way it's going to look when it gets its coating. But as this paint dries, it will actually dull a little bit first. And then once we put our clear coat on top, it really will, will, uh, will make it pop. So let me add my signature. And then the other thing I do is kind of fun here is that uh, when I use these, and uh, when I use these brushes, after I'm done with these, I'll actually take the brush that I used on these paintings and, um, and I'll mount it right here or somewhere on the painting. We, we glue, glue those on, that's kind of give a little piece of your, uh, your painting and what was done with it. So we saved this brush and these brushes, basically, it's a fun part of it. Come down here and sign it. sometimes too. We'll just take a little bit of red and just touch it. So this one I think will start out a little bit uh, a little bit different now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this one kind of in a, in a, uh, in a blue, uh, blue color. Yeah, it might be kind of fun. Now this is a no-no. I'm going to start out with the darker. With the darker green first. But you kind of see. I think it's a lot of fun. I mean whether you're uh, whether you're an artist or not. <laughs> You know, I mean, it seems like uh, people stop painting when they get in school and they get to the point where they, uh, mathematics and academics become a little bit more predominant. A lot of people now, right now, I mean, if I asked you to draw, uh, if I asked you to draw a tree right now, you'd probably draw it the same way you did the last time you drew one. So if that was back in fifth and sixth grade, you know. <laughs> That's probably the tree that you'll draw. So, okay. Get this um, those of you that attended my uh, Magic and Mayhem tour, um, I did live paintings like this um, with, with music. It's a lot of fun. I mean, right now I don't have music going. Normally this is not the way I paint. Normally I'll paint with, uh, with some music going. So, here we go. And like I said, there's no real right or wrong way, so. We can have a little bit of fun with this. I can just dip this around, do whatever. Just have fun, you know what I mean? 
Actually, we could take this edge and do something kind of funky to it. Each one's a little bit different. I mean, that's, that's kind of the fun of doing it, you know? So, I think that's the fun part. And just, you know, being freaking creative, man. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, there's always a trail of paint all over me. But, uh, so this one's gonna be kind of a little different here. And uh, maybe we'll try some funky colors here too. I always get paint all over myself. I wonder how. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up this red. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that green. Once I get in this blue area, I do not wanna go backwards. So I'm gonna mix this up. In other words, I don't wanna take this blue back down in here. Let's make let's make some contrast. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a dark color. I'll use this dark blue right here. You can see right now how this is already uh, started to dry and it's already started to dull. But when we put the clear coat on, like I said before, we put the clear coat on, all this stuff pops back out. So it's kind of cool. And I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add a little bit of light blue here on the top. You can see our, our light source is up here. That's why the top half of the olive is a little bit lighter. Now here, I don't think I'm gonna put a whole lot of yellow in. I think here I'm gonna highlight this thing with just the white. So let me find a white that's nice and thick. This one's a little bit too watery. Let me try this one here. Uh, now let's pick some fun colors. Lift me up. So let's do the toothpick. Get some white in there. You can see I'm gonna mix up a nice little color for that. I'm gonna pull it right through these wet colors because I just, I enjoy seeing just kind of what happens. So here we go. And now I'm gonna start pulling it into a point. Same thing again. Oh, it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm not trying to make it perfect. That's kind of the fun of these is the, is the looseness, the looseness of it. So now what I need to be careful of is making sure these line up. There's a little bit of a far stretch, so I do this a lot. I'm gonna flip this thing upside down. And I wanna make sure that I line this up. So it's gonna go right here. So I wanna pull this line straight back. Here we go, now I'm gonna start turning the brush. Turning the brush, trying to stay towards the middle as I pull it. Okay, good enough. Light's hitting this side, so why don't we make the dark side the left side? I'm gonna start from the inside here. It's a very, very little bit. This is to get that side to kind of pop a little bit. I'll do the same thing down here. Now, when the toothpick actually goes through, um, it'll actually do a little bit of a shadow right there. So I'm gonna actually take this blue and bring it down a little bit. And we'll shade the toothpick. I'll actually round one side of it a little bit. And that way it kind of looks like it's coming through. You see what I mean? Now we'll add a little bit. Do we have any brown? Yes, we do. Darker light. Oh, let me try light brown. Let's see how light it is. Oh yeah, that's good. So I'm gonna come on this side of the toothpick right next to my blue line. And then we're gonna really make it pop out. We're gonna highlight one side with white. Ah, oh, I've got the white. Okay, that's our drippy white. And our thick white, okay. Now I'm gonna start from the outside going in. The reason is, is because as I pull back, when I stop, it's gonna end up with a thin line. If I start from the outside, usually the line starts out thick when I'm squeezing on it. So. That looks pretty good. 